We're going to go on UFC. If we're talking UFC, then we've got to be talking Dave and Jason. Coming up with strawweight uh, championships, we've got welterweights, and we'll be looking forward to the big one next weekend. Uh, Jace, how are you doing, mate? Better. I'm going back there like immediately when we're done. But um, other than that, I'm doing well, my friend. We're gonna uh, we're gonna wait for Dave uh, Dave Betts to join us as well. But Jason, you're okay. Yeah, I'm hanging in. Good man, good man. Well, before Dave gets here, do you want to just throw uh, a little bit of how excited you are for the next big one next week? Oh, uh, Khabib Nurmagomedov and Dustin Poirier. It's going to be phenomenal. Um, Khabib Nurmagomedov is undefeated. His wrestling is better than anybody in the history of that division. Dustin Poirier, on the other hand, has some of the best boxing um, that division has ever seen. It, to me, it's going to come down to can Dustin Poirier knock Khabib Nurmagomedov out while he's coming in for takedowns? And I'm not sure he can. I thought Conor McGregor would be able to piece him up while Nurmagomedov came in for his takedowns, but he wasn't able to. Khabib has an iron chin. You can't knock the man out. And if he's willing to eat a punch, then he'll do whatever it takes to get a takedown. So I think the odds will have to be really big for me to take a shot on Dustin Poirier. Right now, he's like plus 300, and uh, it's not big enough for me to take it. But at the same time, I'm really not looking to lay that big a price on Khabib. So I'm going to dig into the props next week and see if I can find a prop there. As of right now, though, I'm off the side. Chase, is this game, do you think that this fight is actually a lot tighter than the odds are suggesting then? I do. Um, it's tough because I think, I think Dustin Poirier, what he did against Max Holloway, nobody thought he would be able to do. But Max Holloway stepped up in weight, and he wasn't a true lightweight fighter. He really fights at 145. Khabib is uh, a natural lightweight that fights at 155 that might even be able to go up in weight if he really had to. So I just, I just don't know if uh, Dustin's power, which he has, could touch that chin. Because there's only been one fighter that's even been able to uh, knock Khabib down with a punch. And that was Michael Johnson. And it was a bit of a fluky punch. So I think that if Khabib gets a hold of him, the fight's over. And it's just going to come down to can Dustin Poirier knock him out while he's trying to get a hold of him. That's wow. what it comes down to. Wow. Okay. Well, that's uh, one end of the spectrum. Let's go to the other end. Strawweight Championship, Jessica Andrade against Welly Zhang. Andrade, 20 and 6 record, minus 175. Welly Zhang, 19 and 1, plus 155. How does a fighter have a 19 and 1 record and yet it's a dog? Yeah, I think the world might be sleeping on uh, Welly uh, Zhang. In that Strawweight title fight, I picked against Jessica Andrade when she fought Rose Nami Yunus because I wasn't uber impressed with anyone that she had beat in three and a half years, to be honest. The only fighter that she had fought that I had held in high regard was Joanna, and she lost that fight. And in addition to that, she didn't even impress me with the way she beat the fighters that she had beaten the last three and a half years. So I picked against Jessica Andrade in her last title fight. I picked Nami Yunus to beat her because she was light on her feet. She was a great striker. But the only thing I was worried about in that title fight was strength. And what we saw in that fight was Rose Nami Yunus dominates Jessica Andrade for two rounds. But Andrade gets a hold of her, picks her up, drops her on her head, and knocks her out cold. It was a very rare thing. 
that happened in that fight, and it really doesn't happen often. Jessica um, Andrade is only five feet two, right? She packs an incredible punch. She has a solid base of Brazilian jiu-jitsu. She's a physical brute for how small she is, and she's got massive strength for the division. Uh, she's predictable, though. Even though she's got seven knockouts, seven submission wins, six wins by decision, she's well-rounded, but she is predictable. She's constantly moving forward. She first looks to knock out her opponents. If she can't knock them out, she looks to take them down and end them on the mount, uh, on the mat. Her pressure is not overwhelming, though, because it's a slow and prodding pressure. On the flip side, I think there are a lot of people that are sleeping on Whaley Zhang. She comes into the fight 19-1, and one, and like Jessica Andrade, her opponents have not impressed me. But unlike Jessica Andrade, I'm very impressed with the way that she has beaten her opponents down. I think her last two opponents in particular were perfect opponents to fight in preparation for this fight. Both Jessica Aguilar and Tisha Torres were small wrestle grapplers that pack a hard punch. And that's exact, exactly what uh, Jessica Andrade does. Andrade is a more powerful striker. Uh, than they are, but the game plan that Zhang had against Aguilar and Torres should work well for the most part against Jessica Andrade. Zhang has some of the same attributes that Rose Nami Yunus had. She's light on her feet. She has great movement. She cuts angles well. She's a very technical striker, but what she has in spades that Rose did not have is her strength. At the very least, she is as, as strong as Jessica Andrade, and at most, she might have a strength advantage. So, I think that's one of the main reasons why she wins this fight. If she doesn't get knocked out, she wins the fight. She's had 20 professional fights. She's never been finished. And if she avoids a finish here, then I think she has the skills to walk out of the cage with a victory. As far as a bet for the fight, I think the single best angle in the fight is fight to start round four at 1.64. I think both these women are tough enough to take it past the first three rounds and into the championship rounds. So that's the bet that I've placed on her. I think the fight will start round four. And my opinion on who wins, I think, I think, Zhang could win the fight. So I wouldn't hate anybody at taking her at plus 165 or 2.65 on the decimal. But my bet is going to be I really think both these girls are tough enough that the fourth round will start in this fight. For those that don't really know UFC, Jace, just quickly, how long um, do the straw weights? How many rounds is there in the championship fight? A normal fight is three rounds. A championship fight is five rounds. So basically, these girls just have to get past the first three rounds. If you hear the bell for the fourth round, then, then you're a winner. Okay, so uh, we're, we're going at 1.64 to start round four. Um, what about Zaleski Dos Santos and Jing Lang Li? I mean, th this one seems a little bit closer on paper, but not as in the prices. Minus 280 Dos Santos, plus 240 Lee. Um, you know, these two guys have been in the UFC long enough that we pretty much know what these fighters are. Elizio Zaleski Dos Santos was very impressive against Curtis Melender at UFC Fight Night 146. He's a devastating striker. He could knock anybody out with anything he throws. He's not incredibly technical, but he doesn't have to be because his power makes up for it. He doesn't really tire that easily. His cardio is solid. He's got solid footwork. He cuts a good angle. He's got a solid chin, and his wrestling is very underrated. And Saturday morning, he's going to fight the leech. Li Jing Liang, he's a great striker in his own right. 
his career is always going to have a black mark on it because he blatantly eye gouged Jake Matthews, which is terrible. But aside from that, he's a solid striker. He's got a good counter striking game. He's got great cardio. And because of that cardio, he sets a grueling pace with unrelenting pressure. His wrestling game is phenomenal. His top control is really good. But he has one major problem in his fights. He gets hurt badly in round one of fights. For whatever reason, when Jing Liang starts a fight, his striking defense is non-existent. And he has been starched multiple times in the first round. It doesn't always cost them the fight because he recovers and sometimes he rallies to win the fight. But it's a big problem. Now, I think he has a path to victory here. If he uses that ridiculous pace he has and he chains takedown attempts together, he's capable of taking Zaleski Dos Santos down and winning an ugly fight. The problem is his defensive striking is a sieve. And that's why the betting odds reflect that. He gets hit with way too many bombs from people to make me think that he's going to avoid the power of Dos Santos. And if he gets hit with a couple of those bombs, Zaleski Dos Santos will, will put him down. Like He won't be able to recover and rally to win the fight. Okay. From a betting perspective, here's the problem. Dos Santos is like 1.32 right now, I think. I think those odds are too high. So I have not personally made a bet on this fight yet because I'm waiting for the betting market to drop lines on props. But what I will be looking to see is what will Zaleski Dos Santos be to win by knockout in round one? What will Zaleski Dos Santos be to win by knockout in round two? Those two props specifically because of how bad uh, Lee's defensive striking is early on in these fights. If the odds are good enough, I might make a play. But outside of me waiting to see what the price is on those props, and I'll check out other ones, but those two specifically, I have not made a bet on this fight yet. I do think Dos Santos wins the fight. I just don't like the odds. Okay, before I let you go, I can't let you go without giving us what's your, uh, what's your banker, what's your best bet coming up that you're really looking forward to? Um, this event is going to be fight to start round four in the Jessica Andrade title fight. Events coming up in the future. I think I've talked about her many times. I love her to death. She's the greatest woman fighter to ever fight in the octagon. Amanda Nunes has a fight coming up in a month or two against Jermaine Durandamy. Right now, she's minus 300, okay? I, I'm i going to slam that. I'll probably have somewhere around $6,000 to win 2000 on her. But I'll, the props aren't released yet, but I'll be looking for um, Amanda Nunes by knockout. Whatever that is, my guess is it'll be around minus 130. If I were people, I would be looking to bet that prop with about as much money as you're willing to spend in your bankroll because I just don't see anybody right now in the UFC that comes close to her. She destroys everybody she fights and she will destroy this girl. Good way to finish that, Jace. Loved it. Uh, sorry we didn't have uh, Dave. Obviously, technical difficulties there, but Jason more than made up for it. Look out for Amanda Nunes. Can't wait. Don't wish your life away. There's plenty more before that. And remember, Jessica Andrade <laughs> going into round four at 1.64. Jace, until next time, I'll see you soon.